Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam was sent as rahmatul lil alameen. Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatul lil alameen. A mercy unto all of mankind. And yet he cursed. This is not cursing with obscene language. This is la'na. He cursed. And if you have the curse of a prophet on you, you can perform your salat, it's not going anywhere. You can give zakat, it's not going anywhere. You can perform the hajj, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> yes, you can fast all through Ramadan, it's not going anywhere. If you have the curse of a prophet upon you, which is why I wish that these words can reach to Prime Minister Imran Khan because every government before him failed. He cannot expect to succeed. When every government before him failed, when I arrived in Pakistan in 1964 as a student, I left Al Azhar. Pakistani rupee was one rupee 75 pesos to one US dollar. You don't believe me, of course. <laughs> you don't believe me. One rupee 75 pesos was equivalent to one US dollar. The failure of every government in Pakistan is plain and clear before your eyes. If you have eyes, we wish to see. Because the rupee today is about 125 to one US dollar. And the only way this government can succeed is not by depending on scholarship that came out of universities from Oxford to Kaidi Azam University or, excuse me, scholarship which comes out of today's Darul Ulum, which is not to be speaking disparagingly about the Darul Ulum because simply this is inadequate. The education and training that comes out of the, the Darul Ulum is inadequate. You'll not be able to succeed, Imran Khan. At the end of your time, you'll be a failure like all the others before you. And the greatest danger that comes before this government in Pakistan now, is they're going to attack you more vigorously than they attacked previous governments. And the attack will be riba. And you have a 100% guarantee of failure. A hundred percent guarantee of failure, unless you have proper guidance on this subject. So be careful who you turn to for guidance. Nabi Muhammad was sent as Rahmatul Lil Alameen. And he cursed. Who did he curse? He cursed all four. And he said they're all equally guilty. You know the hadith, I'm just repeating it for you. He cursed the one who takes riba. He, takes, he cursed the one who gives riba. He cursed the one who records the transaction. And he cursed the two witnesses. And he said they are all equally guilty. Mm, okay. Well, maybe it's plenty riba. But maybe not if it's just a little bit. Nah? So let's see. Let's see about the fatwa for a little bit. All the ahadith I'm quoting, you will find the text in this book. He said, and I also have this other one, which is the importance of the prohibition of riba. He said, whoever consumes even one dirham of riba, what is a dirham, Maulana Imran? We know about US dollars and sterling pounds and Pakistani rupee, but we never heard about this thing called dirham. It's gone, it's finished, the knowledge is in a garbage bin somewhere. Go search in some garbage bin, you'll find the word dirham. It's gone. And nobody, nobody misses it. Nobody weeps. The dinar and dirham is gone. Nobody loses sleep. Everybody go home and they eat the biryani and they go to sleep. Comfortable. 
If you consume even one dirham of riba, a dirham is money. And the word dirham is in the Quran. Yes, it is. And the word dinar is in the Quran. Remember it when you're in your grave and you're being questioned. Eh? Don't say, I didn't know. And a dirham is a silver coin. And a dinar is a gold coin. And the nice thing about dirham and dinar, and I have to speak slowly so that it will enter into the heart in a manner in which it cannot come out is that this is money in which the value of the money is inside the money it has intrinsic value and so money in the Quran is money which has intrinsic value meaning that the value of the money is in the money but you can do your PhD in international monetary economics you never know that they don't teach that if you consume even one dirham of riba he said it is worse than committing zina 36 times 36 times there are many more ahadith but we have a limited time this should be sufficient for us as a wake-up call that this important this this subject is of supreme importance and therefore that you would hear this subject being taught from the member nearly every juma and when the Maulanas and the Muftis and the Shiyukh and the Ustaz go out to teach and lecture, they will be given primary attention to this subject. And so the people would know the subject. And the danger of the subject is now multiplied many times because of a hadith with a prophecy. Prophecy of what is going to happen in Akhirul Zaman. Akhirul Zaman, the end time. You know you're living in the end time when women are dressed and yet naked. You know you're living in the end time when women are dressed like men. Hence, seeking to assume the functional role of men in society. You know that you're living in the end time when men are dressed like women indicating that men are abandoning the functional role of men in society which is to maintain women and children and to guard and protect them so this is akhiru zaman you know you're living in akhiru zaman when progress is measured by the height of the buildings <laughs> who can build the tallest one you know you live in an akhiru zaman and he said about akhiru zaman and you know it i'm just reminding you that the time will come when you will not find a single person in all of mankind who will not be consuming riba Meaning this is the mother of all attacks that will ever be launched on mankind. Because it's not just Muslims, it's all of mankind. This is the mother of all attacks that will be launched on all of mankind, this one. You will not be able to find a single person in all of mankind who will not be consuming riba. And whosoever claims he is not consuming riba, verily the dust of riba would reach him. Verily the dust of riba would be upon him. Verily the vapor of riba would reach him. But before we leave riba and the banking system now, which is a network of banks all around the world, 
And you know the Prophet said, alayhi salatu waslam, al-kufru millatun wahidah. That the kuffar forms one jamaat, one jamaat. So the banking system is one jamaat around the world. Don't tell me there's any independent bank. They're all connected all around. And the minute you try to disconnect, look at what they're doing to Russia. Look at what they're doing to China. You see? They have, you have to enter into their banking system so you're under their control. And if you want to know what they do when the banks lend money, it's not just fractional reserve banking. That if I have a hundred pounds, I can only lend you a hundred. That's, more, that's as much as I can lend. But if the bank has a hundred, they can lend a thousand. Which is sinful. Which is bogus. Which is a ripoff. But it's worse than that. If you read John Perkins, take a note of the book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Confessions of an Economic Hitman, you will realize that they lend you money, Pakistan, they make sure that they lend you as much that you cannot repay. That's why they're lending you. So they're using money, loans, in order to trap you and enslave you. That's why they lend you money. 